our month to excel. And I want to teach you this morning how to excel and have exponential growth in a startup business. Like I said last week, when we're dealing with success, excelling in life, exponential growth. It's important we go, we've looked at the spiritual angle, it's important that we teach practical things that can help people, hands on, in their businesses and their careers. And I trust God that this teaching, this particular one, will help everyone who is starting something or who will start something when God speaks to your heart to start a business. This will be of good use to you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Spirit of God, speak to us in ways that only you can. Let the entrance of your word give life and give understanding to every area of our simplicity. Teach us from your word how to prosper because we know that you are the one that giveth us the power to make wealth. That you may establish your covenant through us on the earth. Lord, we give you praise. We exalt your name because you are more than able to bring that to come to pass. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' majestic name, it is that we have prayed. In Jesus' majestic name, it is that we have prayed. Please look quickly at Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. I will be reading from the King, New King James Version. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Are you there? If you're there, say, yay. Ah, some people are still looking for it. All right, let me wait for you for a minute. All right, I believe you're there. It says, and you shall remember the Lord, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Okay, the reason that God empowers us to make wealth, the first and primary reason that God will, wants to empower you and I to make wealth, to have exponential growth in our businesses or career, is that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He may, he may use our wealth to establish that covenant. And what's that covenant? Through you, the nations of the world will be blessed. That covenant is a covenant of the reconciliation of the lives of men. To bring them out of darkness into light. So they can enjoy the dividends of the kingdom on this side of eternity and forever. Amen. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. So when you're making wealth, the reason you need that scripture for your business I believe that every Christian who is doing business should make Deuteronomy 8, 18 the foundation of their business. Because when you covenant your business with God, it cannot but have exponential growth. That's the first thing you must do. Covenant your business, your life, your money, your wealth with God. Because that's the only purpose he empowered you to make it in the first place. Proverbs 24, 3 to four, also from the King James Version. And then I, I'll read verse five to six from the message translation. Proverbs 24, verse three to four from the New King James Version. Through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Verse five and six from the message translation. It is better to be wise than strong. That's physical strength now. Intelligence outranks muscles day, <laughs> any day, sorry. Strategic planning, hallelujah, is the key to warfare. To win, you need a lot of good counsel. Lastly, Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. 
And with all you are getting, get understanding. The first thing, ladies and gentlemen, that you must do if you want exponential growth in your business, in your startup, the business you just started or the one you are going to start, determine why you are starting the business in the first place. You must determine why am I starting this business? What's the essence? What's the reason? What's the purpose? To what end am, are we starting this business? See, because if you can figure this out, it forms the rest of everything. What's your brand? It, it will tell you, if you can figure out why you are starting the business, it informs how you, you brand your product or your service. It informs how you package your product or service. It informs the name you give your product or service. It informs the market in which you sell that product or service. It tells you who are your target audience. It tells you, it, it defines your strategy. The purpose defines your strategy. It tells everything. In other words, if you can figure out why, why will answer all these questions. What, who is my target audience? How should we package it? How should we, how should we brand it? What name should we give it? So if, you're, if the reason you are starting something is to serve market women, there's, it will tell you what kind of name to call it. It will tell you how to package it. How do market women want to receive their goods? If you're selling to or serving intellectuals, it informs you what market you go to. Whether you are going to be marketing online or you go straight on into the market. If you, if you want to serve market women, they don't understand so much English. They don't speak so much English. You need to package your product in the way that they can receive it. You catch a fish on its terms. So you, the first thing when you're starting a business is to figure out, determine, figure out first of all, why are we starting this business? A lot, of, a lot of people start businesses because it's prospering somewhere or a cousin started it and is doing well. You can't start selling Gary because your sister is selling Gary and is doing well. Are you called to sell Gary? Why do you want to sell Gary? To who do you want to sell Gary? Who you are selling it to informs how you package it. Who is your target audience? If you figure out why, it tells you all of these things. Habakkuk 2.2, why? It says... Write the vision. Make it plain upon tablets that it may run that read it. If you are able to clearly determine what your vision is, it will be easy to run. Everybody who comes along, every pe person you employ, it will be easy for them to go along with you. Why? Because the vision is clear. Write the vision. Make it plain upon tablets that you yourself may run when you read it. That others that come to work with you may run when they read it. So it's important that we determine, first of all, why am I doing this business? If you can fight, figure that out, it will tell you everything else. What's the purpose of the business? What purpose is this product going to serve? If you are starting a beauty product, you know you can start a beauty product for several reasons. You can start a beauty product to help people tone their skin, whiten their skin or brighten their skin. Uh -huh. But that's not a good one, no. For those of us who are going to be using it, amen? Because of the kind of things that are jammed together to make those products. At the end of the day, you, you might end up with Fanta face and Coca-Cola leg. Now, you can also do a beauty product too for correctional purposes. For those whose faces have been burnt by all the steroids in the other, chemi in the other products. Now, you can also do a beauty product that would help people with their body shape their body. So why you want to start it informs everything. You, make, you must make sure that meeting need, however, and adding value is the core reason why you are starting. If you are starting a business, look, businesses are started to meet needs. If you are just starting a business because you want to do business, then there's no point to start it. You must, your business must be tailored towards me. What need do you want to meet? Whose need do you want to meet? Needs of children, needs of nursing mother, needs of parents, needs of school kids, needs of college students, needs of uh, academics, needs of career people, needs of office people, needs for uh, uh, toiletries. It must be meeting some needs. It must be adding value because money is paid you as a reward for the value you are adding to someone's life. 
particular, added value particularly if you are in service industry. Say, for instance, you have a cleaning company. You are going to be added value to someone else's life, to another company's life. So you have to first of all determine why it is that you are starting that business in the first place. That would help you a great deal to know everything else that you need to do. That's the starting point. Number two, start with what you have. Start where you are. Start with what you have. Please, let's stop this idea of I'm waiting for somebody to give me money to start business. Don't wait for an uncle to bankroll a business. The question I always ask people when they talk about, oh, my brother didn't help me. He's stingy. My cousin didn't help me. My rich uncle didn't help me. I always ask them, who helped your uncle when he started? I know sometimes that's hard. But if we can stop, stop sometimes and figure out, and then a man is not your help. Let me say this to you. If a man makes you, they can break you. If a man makes you or starts you up, someday they may say, if it was not because of me, may God not allow anybody to take the glory over the success in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Start with what you have. You're, you're, you're planning to have a big business. You have hands. Start with your hands. Someone says, oh, the kind of business I want to start requires millions. Why must this require millions? Do something else that will help you raise the capital before you get the millions. So, for instance, I always say to, say for instance, women, don't wait. Look, go and clean somebody's house. Rather than saying, I'm unemployed. And get money in exchange for that service. Learn how to fix hair and go and do home service. Nails, do home service. Do something that you can do with what you have. I want to start a catering business. And I want, you don't want to start with the ideal. Oh, I want an excellent place, an excellent shop. Start in your house. You want to start a beauty product, you don't need a factory. Because it will be expensive to maintain for a startup. You are going to pay staff, pay for the place, buy the... Why do you need all that? Start in your kitchen. Start in your dining room. Mix everything there, do very nice labels, and package it right. Nobody knows where it's coming from. But make sure you're doing quality products. You're making quality products. Start with what you have. God doesn't want you to be afraid. It's, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, I'm reading from the NIV, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. I would uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is there for you. You don't need anybody. If you are jobless, look for something you can do. Approach people. People have needs. Approach them. Let them know. You want to cook. You want to start a catering business. You don't need a shop to start. Cook what you can. Put it in small, small packs. Bring it to church and give people the, the sample pack. And let them start ordering from home. So that every Sunday, you pack your boot full of orders. That's how to start. Start with what you have. In Nigeria, everybody, let me tell you what, everybody, at least in Lagos, they want something that is fast because everybody is busy. So if, say, for instance, you want to start, make a father stew. Everybody has rice in the house. Package small, small samples, bring it to church and say, this is what I do. I just wanted to have cook stew. It's an investment. You will get the money back. If you make 20 samples, and give to, to people in church, out of the 20, a minimum of five will order eventually if the product is good. That's why it's insisted, make it quality and keep to the quality. Ofada, Ogbono, Edikaikon. There's this calabar soup. If you know how to make that one, I'll be your customer. I, saw, I, I stumbled on it at a hall. I think Pastor Emmanuel, uh, did, we went to have lunch with, uh, I think, children's church teachers. And then 
I noticed he was ordering the thing. I said, ah, what is that? Unkwabi, <laughs> that one. And he told me, I said, okay, let me try it. When I got home and I tried it, hey. But make sure you know how to do it well. Make samples. Distribute to people. Go to banks. Give people samples. This is what I do. I want to introduce my business to you. Start there. You don't need a big restaurant to start. And let people start ordering. If you're, if you're into uh, baking, bake. And let people start ordering. Whatever it is, the works of your hand will bless you. God doesn't want you to be afraid. He said we should not be afraid. I'll be with you. Do not be dismayed for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. Isaiah 41 and 10. Number three, get a good name. A lot of people start businesses with bad names. The glory of God, beauty products. Come on now, come on. The people, even born again Christians, some of them would not buy it because you put the glory of God. Put glory of God and then the thing is not quality. Look for a posh name. Something tush, something trendy. If you put a trendy name, it doesn't mean that God will not bless it. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Chin, chin. <laughs> I mean, come on. In what generation? <laughs> Give it some trendy name. Beautiful names. You know, something that when people see it, it will be attractive and package it right. I've seen some products. If you have a pro good product and a bad package, then it's a lot of loss because everything now is about packaging. So get a good name. Something that is relatable. People, something, a name people can relate with. Not some name that, uh, you know... <laughs> It's not catchy, it's not attractive, it's not interesting. Even Proverbs 22, verse 1, the Bible says a good name is to be chosen rather than riches. Of course, it's talking about a, a person's name. But even your business needs a good name. Get it a good name. Number four, be mindful of your brand and your package. Listen, your brand defines your business. It defines the identity of your business. Your personal brand defines your identity. So even your products need a brand. Industries or, or organizations, businesses, big businesses invest millions. In fact, some invest billions into their brand to protect and to push out their brand after you have made it. But even when you are starting, think about your brand. Think about the identity of the product or the service you are trying to uh, 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 provide. Think about the brand, the identity. When people see that product, what do you want them to think of? You're starting a restaurant. When people are passing, how do, how do, you, want the, how them to, how do you want them to perceive that ref, res, restaurant within three seconds? A lot of Christians do not know that brand is very critical. Brand is everything to the identity of your business. Your brand essence tells who you are, what you are about, and whether you are good or not. And let me say this. People who do flyers, that's why I'm very, 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 very um, persistent on the way our flyers come. If people cannot look at your flyer and see the relevant things within 10 seconds, you lost, it's, it's useless. That, that advertisement is useless. Why? People's attention span these days is short. In the last days, knowledge shall increase and people shall run to, there is a lot of running to and fro. And then the reason anybody will stop when they see your flyer online is whether it's attractive and they can see what it's about. You make a flyer and the name of your business is missing on the flyer. That's bad branding. That's why I tell the people who make flyers for Global Harvest Church, put Global Harvest Church there, Bagada. Not just a small logo. People don't know the logo yet when you are starting something. It's after years and years and years of pushing out that name that the brand sticks in the head of people, in the mind of people. Do you think it's a joke when Coca-Cola started slamming Coke everywhere? Coke, every, they, they are push, it's called push. They are pushing it into your psyche. So that you see it, you see it, you see it. Faith coming by hearing and hearing. 
even retention. Branding comes by seeing and seeing by the pictures you see. A name that is in your face all the time, you remember. When you see the check sign, clearly you know that's Nike. But before Nike started putting that check alone, for years, it was Nike always in your face. Nike, 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 Nike. You must push your brand. So that's why it's caref- you must be careful when you're choosing your brand and the way you package. The hair I have on now, all of you know this is not the length of my hair. I pray, I wish, hallelujah, for my hair to be 18 inches or 16 inches. Amen. Ah, I would do shakara, honestly. <laughs> but this hair is a concept made by a man, by men. So men put, came together to, to put this together. But let me tell you what tripped me. The way it was made the name of the brand, and when they brought the package, it was a gift. It is a gift, actually. So I can, you know, yeah, right. But when they delivered it, the way it was delivered, I was tripping. Even me that was giving, I was tripping for the package. But make sure that when you package, what is inside that package must be good. Because people will be disappointed. The way it was packaged, it was packaged as if you know, you know those kind of deliveries when you order stuff in the U.S. And it came in a, in a uh, you know, a, a brown package. And then there was this black. The package itself had a black. And inside the black, there was a bag. Ah, that the hair was put. I said, okay now. It's like un- un- unraveling a revelation. And then the product is good. But to think that men came up with that product amazed me. So it's very important that you think that way. A good name. Your brand. Number five. Take customer service very seriously. I cannot overemphasize this. A lot of people start businesses, especially Christians, and they don't think about customer service. Excellent service delivery. Good customer service is what will keep bringing people back to your business, whether it's a startup or an established one. Luke chapter 6, verse 31 says, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It has amazed me so much that, you know, Nigerians are so hardworking. We're creative people. I mean, with the potentials that Nigerians have, honestly, we can take the world. But there's one thing that I see that is missing. That's customer service. We, are, we need to be intentional about it and to take it very seriously. The self-centeredness even affects the way we do business. I mean, it's all over the place. In traffic, people don't care. I mean, that's, in, it's only here that you see that people are driving, you know, and people who have traveled abroad, you think they are the ones that know, you know, they are the people who speak Onibo. And then the guy is driving, and because he wants to buy, buy plantain, he will park right on the road. There are other people coming, you know, He's, he's totally unmindful, self-absorbed. Because you want to buy plantain. And then the one that would disappoint me, honestly, you may be disappointed that, that person knows how to speak in tongues. I, I, was, I was lost one day in a, in a place where we were living before. This is in the morning. Everybody was busy. Everybody was rushing to go. People were driving, driving to work. People were taking their kids to work. And then this guy was going, then he sees a friend jogging. I mean, all of us were on that, and he stops. <sighs> we, I mean, I thought, because I was next to him, I thought maybe his car had problems, only to discover that he stopped to greet the friend that was jogging, and I'm thinking, like really, self-centeredness. And this attitude affects even business. Where we do things, so, I mean, I was telling you last week how I went to buy something in someone's, in, in a, in a uh, place here. It was a petrol station and they had this product I was looking for. And the lady just crossed her leg and she was eating. And a customer walked in. The money you've been fasting and praying for just walked in. It doesn't matter if the person is bringing 5,000, 15,000, 50,000, 100,000 or 1 million. That money you've been waiting for just walked in. Because money doesn't work on legs. It works 
in the pocket of people who walk with legs. And you were eating. So her stomach was more important. Taking care of herself was more important than business. What are your customers saying? What is their feedback? How do they want the service to be delivered to them? Take that very seriously. And God will bless your business. If every business person knows Luke chapter 6 verse 31, do unto others as you have them do unto you, we will excel exponentially in business. Because people will gravitate towards us. If you want to be th treated like a king, treat others like kings. Treated like a queen, treat others like queen. Plan strategically. Number six, strategy. Very important. If you are starting a business, be strategic, be intentional. What are you selling? To who, where, when, and how are you going to be selling? Very important. Strategy. What do we want to achieve in two years? In three years? What do we want to achieve in this business? How far do we want to grow in three years? How far do we want to grow in five years? In 10 years? In 20 years? 50 years? Do I want this business to outlive me? So you plan for 100 years. That's why you have TM Lewin. That's why you have Hughes and Curtis. That's how you have Colgate. Many other brands have died, but those other ones were intentional. We want this business to outlive us. Do you want your business to outlive you, or are you doing business to survive? We've got to figure that out. Be strategic. Where, how much growth do you want in that? How many clients do you want to have in two years? You can't just sit down and fold your hands because you are speaking in tongues. You've got to work. Plan strategically. That's why Proverbs are text. Says Proverbs 24, 5 and 6 from the message translation. Says it is better to be wise than to be strong. Intelligent outranks muzzle any day. Strategic planning is the key to warfare. Okay? Business enterprise is also warfare. Because there are people who don't want your business to thrive. Whether you, don't, you know it or not, you are in Nigeria and you know that there is jazz. Honey, just as you are praying, you must strategize. SWOT, do a SWOT analysis of your business. What are your strengths? What are your weakness, weaknesses? What are your opportunities and what are the threats? You have to be intentional. Do all of that as you plan. Number seven, take advantage of the social media platforms. You may not have enough money as a startup to build a website, but use Instagram, use Facebook, advertise. You don't need a lot of money to advertise on this social media. Even if it is moi moi that you are selling, put the pictures of your moi moi there and put, garnish it with eggs, with uh, tomatoes, you know, and present it. Take a photo and shoot it out. Then give different ideas. Be creative. Give different ideas of how moi moi can be served. Your food, put it, put photos of your food. Let people be salivating as they are looking at the photographs. And as you are putting it there as a Christian, add tongues to it. Declare something on those pictures before they go out. Declare the word of God over the scriptures. Ask for supernatural advertisements. The people who need your product, tell the angels of God to go and bring them to your page. Take advantage. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, do what? Get with wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Understand how the social media platforms work. And take, to, take advantage of them. Number eight, work hard. I see a lot of Christians who start businesses, but they are not ready to work. Guys, hard work is the secret of success. Actually, success happens when preparation, hard work or preparation meets with opportunity. I'm in ministry, and trust me, I may not be pastoring a church of 10,000, 50,000 people yet, but this one that I'm pastoring, I'm working my brains out in preparation for that time. Work hard. You can't just fold your hands and it's, nothing just happens. We can't fold our hands and just say, oh, because you have fasted and prayed. No, fasting and prayer is not enough. Hard work, being there. You are starting a business, you can't be gallivanting around because everybody is having no one bear every weekend. Weekend is the day, is the time when you're supposed to be producing. Stay with your business. Stay there. Invest in it. Work hard. 
and God will prosper it in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 22, 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before men. man. You know what? If you are diligent and you are hardworking, it's only a matter of time. People will hear about your hard work. It pays off. Your product will go out. You can't work hard and God will not add blessings to it. There's a, there's a scripture that says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep and poverty. But that is not your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you what, the reason you must work hard, there are competitions everywhere. There are options. Your clients, the same clients you are going for, there are 10 other businesses like yours going for the same people. And that's why hard work is critical. Number nine. Do not resent criticism. Please, learn from it. When people complain, when your customers complain, I see a lot of people, especially in Nigeria. Honestly, I've never seen a... We don't just like comments, except, except they are favorable. We just want to want to hear it. If a client, I, I cannot remember, I think so far, to, the, to my recollection in recent years, that I've had one complain or the other in the, about a business or a product to the owners and they received it well. I will not lie to you, maybe one or two. We just can't take it. But that, it may not be pleasant, but the client is saying to you what they would like. And anybody who even complains to you actually likes your business because I could have walked away and not actually bought anything and tell everybody else. See, everybody that walks away from your business, this is the way it runs. They will tell a minimum of 10 other people the negative thing they saw. So I'd rather you tell me, I would even give you a gift for telling me. That way I've won you over. And then I'll go back and work at it. Let's learn from criticisms. Let's see it as constructive criticisms. Feedback to help us enhance our business and our service delivery. Don't be afraid. God said he will help you. The same scripture that we read, Isaiah 41 and 10. He said, I'm going to help you. Do not be dismayed. Don't get confused because somebody gave a criticism. Embrace criticism. Number 10. Covenant your business with God. Covenant your business with God. <laughs> I cannot overemphasize this. Believe him for exponential success. But first covenant your... Let me say this to you. Any business that is covenanted with God cannot die anyhow. Cannot, it, can't, it can't just vamoose. It can't just vanish. Because God will not allow it to happen. I was reading about Sam Walton, the man who started Walmart. The reason, the man is gone, but Walmart is growing strong. That business was started and covenanted with God. I understand it was the same thing as Colgate. So, it always makes a difference. Jeremiah 17 and 7. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who confides in him. Deuteronomy 8.18. Remember the Lord your God, for it is him that gives you the power to make wealth. The only reason, why? Is that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, on this earth. And he wants to do it through your wealth. Soul winning would only happen when Christians learn to covenant their wealth, their money with God. But if we remain part of the pack, that wants to just, you know, it's all about us, whatever is your money, my money, I keep it to myself, you know, I don't give to God, I don't tithe, I don't. The business will die a natural death, like you, the owner, when the time comes. So it's, it's very important, if we want our business to do well and to have exponential good, and root it in God. And root it in God. Covenant your business with God. There's nothing you covenant with God that can be destroyed. God will not allow it to happen. 
and you will prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Number 11, believe in God's ability in you. Believe, believe in God's ability in you. The Bible helps us to understand in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You need to believe in God and believe in his ability inside of you. Believe in yourself. Not that you can do anything by yourself, but God has put an ability, a gift, a talent inside of you. Believe in that. Believe that when you start a, a, a business, that business will prosper. It will outlive you. It will do well. It will grow. If you don't believe in the product you are selling, why should somebody else believe in it? Believing in that product informs how you even sell the product in the first place. How good is your product? Can you hit your chest about that product? Do you use your own product? Can you boast about that product? Can you boast about your own service? The way you are washing other people's toilets, if they wash your toilet with, like that, will you be satisfied? The way that you are serving the food that you are serving in your restaurant, who do you want to serve it to? If the president was to come and eat in your buka, would they come back? That's the way that we should serve. How do we want to package the food that we're selling? How do we want to package the dresses? I see a lot of Christians who, who are seamstresses or tailors or fashion designers. What other name do we call them? So that's why it's important you have a good brand. So that when you introduce yourself, you don't say, ah, I'm a tailor. Uh -huh. There are good names you can call that. A fashion designer, you know, a creative Whatever. Yeah, but if, yeah, some people say stylist, but stylist is broad. It's broader than just making dresses. But we made dresses, somebody made a dress for me. And they packaged it in, you know, that black and white nylon bag. The moment they gave, I mean, they sent it to me, the moment I saw it, I made up my mind I'm not sewing with this person again. I'm that particular. Incidentally, there were two that were delivered. One package in a branded bag, I think that is important. At least that's the least you can do. And then the way that they sewed the clothes, the, this other person, the finishing, the, the way they, they um, what do you, the hemming. This other person hemmed her own with white. You sewed me a colored dress. You are hemming with white. Come on, come on. It is just laziness. To remove, yes, use the color of the fabric. So, I mean, it's, it's about excellence, quality. It will just take a few minutes, but it goes a long way to say something about your brand. See, if you are starting a business, be conscious of brand, study about brand, go and read about branding. And then they did all that. The way the other lady sold her own, there were some particular things I was looking for. They, Finishing the finest, she had it. This other one uh, lined with uh, white and then packaged it in, in white, black and white nylon. I said, Come on now. I, I decided who would be sewing for me with that two delivery. It's important the finest, putting, adding finest, finesse, add it. Lastly, believe in that product or service that you're delivering. Proverbs 16 and 3, I'm reading from NIV. It says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. Commit it to him. A startup is not established yet. But like I said, if you covenant your business with God, he will make it established. But you yourself have to believe in the product. There are people, I, I, there are people who make products that don't eat it. Yes. Why? Because of what they use to make it. You 
can't make a product for some people and not be able to use it. Can you see the reason why we have to do something qualitative and believe in our product is yes, you might be thinking, okay, say for, say for instance, you produce drugs. Okay? If the intention, like some people who produce drugs, drugs that kill people, if the intention is just to make money, and most of the thing is placebo, you put 50% of what's the, the potency of the const, uh, constitution of the drug in it, you don't know. Let me tell you what. What goes around comes around. You don't know the day that your own child, because you don't follow your children around. You don't follow your children's spouses or your children's children around. You don't know the day that drug will gravitate to your child or their spouse or your grandchild or your cousin or that friend that is a, of great help to you or your confidant. So let's do everything with the fear of God. Your service, your product, our services and products. Let's do it as unto God. See, the person who will be consuming that good or product may not see you or see the cons constituents of the product, but God does. If our conscience is to do business under God, God bearing us witness, if we have that consciousness, we will not do anything any kind of way. Those people who produce drugs that kill other people, will not do it. Their conscience has been said with red iron. And that's why the Bible says that because judgment is not speedily executed against evil or wrongdoing, people's hearts are set in them to do evil continuously. But I trust God that you are not that kind of person. I want to challenge us to produce products that we are proud of that we can give to others. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I want us to stand up and pray. I want you to pray the favor of God upon your startup business. It's okay if somebody else is looking around, but you cannot. Yes, maybe you have a career today, but you are dreaming of starting a business. You need to pray this prayer. Say, Father, put your favor upon my business, upon the works of my hands. Maybe you're not running a business, but you, you, there's something you're doing. You're running a career. Father, place your favor upon my work. And if you don't have something that you're doing yet, what do you hope to do? Ask for God's favor upon it. I pray in the name of Jesus that God's favor will come upon the works of your hand in the name of Jesus. You will not fall behind. Amongst equals, God will put you first. May your product be the first to be sorted. May your services be the first to be sorted. May God create a space for you in the palaces of life that matter to your destiny and that product in the name of Jesus. I pray that the people who need what you produce, who need your service, who need that career, even those of you who are in career and are looking to change a job, those who need you, your talent, your gift will locate you in the name of Jesus. Pray for the favor of God. You can't be silent. Whether you are doing business or you work for another organization, you need the favor of God. Father, place, place your hand on your head and say, Father, place your favor upon me. If they are downsizing, Father, it is not me that they will cut off. Let me be somebody, help me to be somebody that adds value. Let me be a Joseph, a Daniel in my office. If you are into business, place your favor upon me, Father. Let your strong hand, your right hand that lifts, be upon me, upon my business, upon my brand. Wherever they see the brand, Global Harvest Church, name your own. Father, let it be attractive to everyone you have called to us. I come against every power of darkness assigned or arrayed against your business. They will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone that takes your brand, your label, your card, your flyer to any evil altar, may the fire of God fall upon that altar in the name of Jesus. May the judgment of God answer in your place in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we receive your favor. The next prayer point you are going to pray. 
We're going to pray for covenant security, protection. Like Pastor Emmanuel said when we were praying this morning, people are scared. I mean, people are so scared about this coronavirus. I sent out a video that our spiritual father sent me. It blessed me so much about a guy who has been doing some research and the percentage by numbers of who it can affect. But Pastor Emmanuel said something. He said, you have to believe God that if you come in contact with somebody that has coronavirus, they will be healed. I loved that. I love thinking outside the bus. I love that. My contact with you will heal you. But I will not catch it. Pray for covenant security. Corona will not locate you. Will not locate your house. Will not locate your children. Will not locate your life. Anywhere it is coming from, we forbid this Allah prohibit it from accessing the life of the children of God. We are covenant people. We place a bloodline. In the name of Jesus. It will not enter into Africa. It will not enter Nigeria. In the name of Jesus. If anybody was to bring it to Nigeria, they will be stopped and hindered. They will not make it here. They will stay where they are in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We place covenant secure. We cover Nigeria, Africa. We cover with the blood of Jesus. And everybody who has lost a friend, lost a family member to coronavirus, may the Lord reach out to them and heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. May that disease and infection be stopped in their lineage and their family. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. The Bible says, and the Lord will take away from you all sicknesses and will not afflict you with none of the diseases, the terrible disease of Egypt, which you have known. But he will lay it on those who hate you. Pray. This is the promise of God. The Bible says, God will not allow nor place on you any of the diseases of Egypt. That you have heard. Egypt means the world. There shall no evil befall you, says the Bible. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling place. I confess this over my life and my family every day. There shall no evil befall me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. There shall no evil befall me. Neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Pray that prayer. Throughout this week, you didn't remember to pray. This is a good time to cover your life, your family, your children. Your business, everything with the blood of Jesus. Covenant security covers you. Coronavirus will not locate your life. It will not locate us. It will not come near us. A thousand shall fall at our side and ten thousand by our right hand, but it will not come near us. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Proverbs 18.10 The righteous run it into it and is safe. Pray, people. Pray, pray, pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The name of the Lord. Bible says in Psalm 61 verse 3, You have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I give you a few more seconds. Plead the blood of Jesus upon your life. Father, I cover Global Harvest Church and every of its members with the blood of Jesus. I place a bloodline upon my household, upon my life, my children, my husband, and every, uh, every member of Global Harvest Church worldwide. There shall no evil befall us, neither shall any play come near our dwelling in the name of Jesus. We stay the hand of coronavirus or any form of infection or any form of disease. We stay the hand of sickness, diseases, infections from us in the name of Jesus. We draw a bloodline. We surround our life with the blood of Jesus in the spirit and in the natural. In the realm of the spirit, we activate the ministry of angels to keep away from us and ours and our loved ones, our family, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and begin to thank God. Call the name of Jesus upon your life. Father, I plead your name, the name of Jesus upon my life. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, thank you for your precious people. Thank you for the grace you have given to us. Thank you for your hand that is upon us. Father, we exalt your name. We glorify you. Lord, I ask for your favor over everyone represented in this house. 
the works of their hands, their career, their business, everyone who is starting a business and those who are already doing business. Lord, we ask, oh God, for your breath, your fresh breath to come upon our lives and everything we own and that represents us in the name of Jesus. Let your favor attend to us, attend to our business, attend to the works of our hands, attend to us in the place of work, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for this ones. No disease, no infirmity, no sickness shall befall any one of us in the name of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. And Lord, I draw a bloodline upon my life, my husband, my children, and every member of Global Harvest Church in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we decree according to your word, there shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Are you glad you came to the house of God? Please put your hands together, saints of God, and have your seat for a minute. I have a few announcements before we close. May the name of Jesus indeed cover you. Cover all the works of your hands. I place the name of Jesus in the spirit. The blood of Jesus in the spirit. Over your life. Over the works of your hand. Over your career. Over your business. In the name of Jesus. May your businesses outlive you. May your business prosper exceedingly. In all that you do, nothing missing, nothing broken. The wrong hands will not locate your business. The wrong eyes will not locate your business. The wrong voices will not speak over your business. In the mighty name of Jesus, we silence the voice of the adversary concerning your business. And we declare exponential success, exponential growth concerning that business in the name of Jesus. Your hands will deliver the best products. You will sit among the kings in that industry in the name of Jesus. Where many are struggling, God will cause you to excel. You will not want anything good. May the products of our hands find their location in international doors in the name of Jesus. Your business will not be constrained. It will not be limited to Lagos. We decree open doors for your businesses across Nigeria, across the world, in the mighty name of Jesus. He that has faith for amen in that prayer, I decree, I declare open doors for your businesses internationally in the name of Jesus. You will, be, you will not be turned back. Amen. You will not be refused. Amen. The wisdom, the creativity to package right, to produce right, up to standard, even that will, out, that will be outstanding, may the Lord deliver it to you. Amen. May the Lord connect you with connections, relevant Amen. to what you do that cannot be disconnected by men Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. In your lifetime, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Others will not eat it when you are gone. You may your businesses outlive you. And it shall be well with you. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. 